Thanks for checking out CPU Cores on Steam. CPU Cores has one goal in mind, and that is to maximize the FPS of whatever game that you're playing. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how the software looks as well as how the software functions. Um, so first of all, when you first run the software within Steam, you'll see that Steam will show that you're actually using the CPU, CPU Core software. This is part of the Steam integration. When you first launch the software, it detects all your different games and sets itself up in Steam. So I'm going to close the software, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in a moment here. So we're going to launch it. You're going to see that it starts detecting all my games here. I have a little bit over 100 games. And you can see all the different games here. Now we can actually go into a different mode, a grid mode within CPU cores, and we can kind of expand the different uh, listings um, in case you want to search for your games in a little bit of a different way. We can then go back to the uh, default listing mode, and we can search for our games. Let's type uh, Duke Nukem, for example. We can search for Duke Nukem or we could just delete our search and scroll through the games ourselves. Now, CPU Cores maximizes your game's FPS by looking at how your CPU interacts with your operating system, um, your games, and then just kind of generic applications that you have on your PC. And so, essentially, CPU Cores does five core things. Uh, the first thing is the Direct Steam uh, integration, which we just reviewed. It automatically detects your game as well as when you start a game within CPU cores, CPU cores will send a trigger over to your Steam client to launch the game and then CPU cores does its thing. For example, you see that I'm inside the CPU cores application. However, if I launch a game through CPU cores, let's take, uh, let's take Duke Nukem again for an example. So we're going to launch Duke Nukem here. Now you'll notice my Steam friends list has showed that I'm now playing Duke Nukem. And we can go ahead and close this. And then it'll revert back into nothing. So CPU cores, uh, as a demonstration, showed you the game detection and then launching it. And then it shows your Steam friends list actually switching over to the game that you're actually playing. So your, your Steam friends list will not say that you're playing CPU cores. It'll say that you're playing Duke Nukem or Arc or Arma or whatever the game is. So that's part of the uh, Steam integration. It makes it really easy. So you pretty much just start CPU cores and then click the start game and that's it. You don't have to mess around with configuring anything specific for the game. You don't have to mess around with anything specific to your OS. You don't have to mess around with anything. It's super easy to use. Now part of what CPU cores does is operating system optimization. Um, I've broken it down in a couple different categories. It does process core shifting and what I mean is, if we take a look at your task manager, for example, task manager will show that, for this example, we have a dual core CPU. And you'll see that I have uh, lots of things going on. I'm recording a video, obviously. Um, I also have a Twitch stream running. I have Steam running. I have a couple different web browsers running. I have my video editing software. I have a lot of different things running at once. Now, when CPU cores first starts, it'll take all the operating system uh, processes and switch them over to the first core. And that enables the operating system, first of all, to be a little bit more efficient as it doesn't have to switch between uh, cores for how it uh, services each thread that it has. So overall, right there, it's a little bit more efficient. What it also does is it allows you to isolate um, different processing cores to be used exclusively for a game. So for example, if we go ahead and start a program within CPU cores, and uh, let's do a just a generic, we're going to use MS Paint. Um, we're going to pretend MS Paint is a game, a non-Steam game. Um, and we're going to use MS Paint because it uses virtually zero processing power and it helps us kind of demonstrate this uh, first point. So we're going to start this. MS Paint starts right here. And right away we can, we can see that our first core usage goes up, our second core usage goes down. And our second core still has a little bit going on and that's because I have a video recording software that's uh, recording this video. And I have CPU cores set. If we go to the advance and we go to our whitelist, we have a whitelist telling CPU cores to not do anything to my video recording software, meaning that to use whatever cores the video recording software wants to use. But we'll take notice here that uh, the main core processing power has gone up and that's because CPU cores has moved the operating system processes over to the first core and then it also does things like looking at the services that are going on and then processes in general it makes modifications to give the most amount of CPU uh, available to your game so for example if we take a look at 
let's let's take a look at my web browser for example let's take a look at Chrome so if we take a look at Chrome here Chrome has been set to the first processor and Chrome's priority has been lowered as well if we take a look at Chrome we can see the priority is set to below normal and that's one of the advanced features within uh, CPU cores that cons constrain your web browser but if we also take a look at uh, let's take an example let's see here let's take a look at search indexer um, search indexer is something that's known to be a resource hog on Windows we can see here that uh, CPU cores has isolated that to the first processor and in addition CPU cores has set the affinity to this to be low um, so if a game is competing for CPU race, uh, resources, it'll be able to take more CPU resources uh, than what Search Indexer can take for itself. Um, so that's one of the things CPU Core does is it isolates the operating system to the first core, it takes a look at the services, and then it takes a look at your OS, just processes in general, and make sure that those processes use less amount of CPU to give more uh, available to your game. And then the next thing, the game optimization, Let's undo this here. Uh, the game optimization allows CPU cores to do things like disable hyperthreading specific for just that game, to set a game on a dedicated core. Um, I only have a two-core uh, two system here, so this option I'll probably disable. But let's say I did want to enable it. If I enable this and then started a game, let's, uh, let's do Duke Nukem again. Whoop. So if I start Duke Nukem, dedicated cores only, when Duke Nukem starts, again, we see that it says um, in-game Duke Nukem. Um, if we go to look at the actual Duke Nukem process, we'll see that CPU cores is forcing it onto a set processor, processor number one, and that uh, it's never going to allow it to go anywhere but there. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and close this. And then minimize this. All right, let's bring this back up. So the second part, or the third part, the game optimization, CPU cores will put it on dedicated cores if that's what you have enabled. It'll do per game hyperthreading if you have that enabled or disabled. And it integrates directly with Steam, so you just have to click a button and CPU cores does everything else. Um, as far as a non-Steam game, you can actually click this, run a non-Steam game. We selected MS Paint, but you could select World of Warcraft, you could select Photoshop, you could select a uh, game from any other non-Steam source. So you could do that as well. Um, or what you can do is you can click on this area here. This loads all the different processes that you have running. Um, I don't have any other games running right now, but let's say, let's say Fraps, for example. Um, instead of Fraps, let's say this was Minecraft. Uh, what you could do is you could select Minecraft, uh, you could select uh, maybe um, the Java service or the Java process for Minecraft and you could click these two and click CPU cores it. And essentially what that'll do is that'll do all the OS optimization, the game optimization, the non-game, whatever sort of things, but instead of doing the Steam integration it'll launch, um, instead of the Steam integration launch it'll attach to the processes and do everything that it would as if it were a Steam game. Um, and then there's non-Steam uh, optimization. So uh, for example, when you start a game from CPU cores, let me remove the filter. When you start a game from CPU cores, um, any other programs that you happen to have running, such as, let's say you have a, a Word document, a Notepad document, let's say you have an Excel spreadsheet or any other piece of software that you have running, uh, maybe it's a, a music player, maybe something like that, um, CPU cores will take a look at the application and depending on what it is, it'll do certain things to constrain the amount of CPU again. So it'll put all that back on the OS core, um, and then certain things like web browsers or flash players, CPU cores will squeeze out you know, even more CPU by constraining that process to limit the resources that it uses. So that means you can, uh, you can play whatever game that you're playing and let's say watch a Twitch stream at the same time or maybe listen to a YouTube video and you won't have to worry about the Twitch stream or the YouTube video causing your FPS to plummet when there's a, a ton of stuff going on with whatever uh, Twitch stream or whatever video you're watching or whatever. So so this makes uh, flash and video uh, not affect your game uh, as much as it would without it. Um, and then there's some extra things within CPU cores. 
So uh, let's just review the app a little bit more. Well, when we start it, again, we have all the different games here. Um, we can go into the grid mode. Grid mode is just a, another way of viewing things. Um, and then there is an advanced mode. Um, in the advanced mode, you have the ability to uh, toggle the web browser constraining. Uh, that's something that we quickly reviewed. That's, again, for um, limiting the amount of CPU that like a Twitch stream could use or like a YouTube video. Um, if you want to set a game to work on a specific core, and this is more for if you have like a, a four core processor, um, let's say your game only can operate on two cores and but not three cores, you can actually set whatever type of core assignment you want uh, right in here. But generally speaking, you can just leave this. Um, if you want to run CPU cores unrelated to gaming, but just have CPU cores manage the OS, um, you have that option to do right here. Uh, we have a stream option here, and this is just for uh, the Steam configuration. I mean, and uh, this generally you don't have to do anything. But if you're running multiple Steam libraries, and for some reason CPU cores isn't detecting them all, you can actually configure uh, individual Steam libraries here. But generally speaking, the Steam detection works pretty flawlessly. Um, you have the ability to whitelist, meaning that CPU cores can ignore a particular application. I'm doing this right now for my video recording software, which is why you see um, CPU going on both cores, even though I've enabled CPU cores for, let's say, the Duke Nukem or the MS Paint uh, game and program just as a demo. Um, so I have CPU, I have a camera recorder um, bypassing the CPU core settings. So this you may not use, um, but in case you need to, the option is there. And then there is a new Twitch feature, and this is something that was just added. Um, and what this allows you to do, this is more for people who uh, stream really high-end streams and also play some really high-end games. Um, so if you enable this, and I have it set for OBS, if you enable this, it'll allow you to carve out a certain amount of CPU power just for your OBS. And generally, you'd want to enable this at the same time as enabling game-specific core settings. So what this will do is you can carve out a certain amount of CPU just for OBS and a certain amount of CPU just for your video game. And then, of course, a certain amount of CPU that goes for your OS and otherwise your non-gaming applications. And that ensures that programs and games and your streaming software don't overlap and step into one another, causing FPS drops in your game. So um, as we all know, if you're playing a game and you're in an area that has a ton of action, your stream software suddenly will spike in the amount of CPU it uses. And then if your streaming software spikes, that can cause your FPS of your game to decrease and make a situation that isn't very uh, fun to be in. So this, you can constrain the amount of processing power that your uh, streaming software uses. Um, and then there's also a severe constraint um, if you want to do things a little bit more in an advanced way. So this, if you're a streamer, I'd recommend kind of playing around with this and seeing what your results are. And uh, so that's basically it. The software is very easy, um, not too many options, uh, mostly because it auto detects itself, it sets itself up, it does everything um, automatically um, when you start it within Steam. So um, there are some benchmark videos. I think I have about 10 of them. If you go to the CPU Core's Steam page and then scroll down a little bit and view the discussions, there is a sticky here, uh, Game Benchmarks and CPU Cores. The very beginning shows a little bit about my benchmark system, but then you can actually see the benchmark results. Um, here is about 14% increase with Left 4 Dead 2, a little over 6% with Tomb Raider, 58% with Team Fortress 2, and then we have Arma 3, CSGO, Verdun, Arc, Path of Exile. And I'm going to be doing more and more benchmarks over time. And the methodology that I use for doing the actual benchmarks is posted up here. A little bit about the system, why I chose the hardware, and kind of what I'm doing. And uh, so hopefully this explains everything about CPU cores, how it works, um, why it improves FPS. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the uh, CPU forums on Steam. And otherwise, check out all the different screenshots and happy gaming.